Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to ITR Technologies Services Plus Installation and Configuration Web. Today, we will have the following on our agenda. We'll do a Services Plus Installation, the startup, database changes, configuring the mail server, importing users, converting requesters to technicians, and configuring notification rules. My name is Rechel Vormerons, and I'm a certified managed engine engineer for ITR technology. Cool. I will be jumping over to the first page. Right. So as you guys can see, basically you get the installation file from managed engine site itself or the download file. You can define if it's on, uh, if it's cloud or if it's on premise. I've already downloaded the file just to make the process a bit quicker and we will start running the file. So first up, it pops up with the screen and you will define where your installation will be running to. You will say next, you will confirm, uh, you will accept the license agreement. You will sp specify which edition you want to play around with. If you're looking for the standard, that would be the help desk with the knowledge base solution with SLAs. You've got professional, that will be the asset management part, as well as the help desk tool. The enterprise will be the ITIL functionalities of the product, project management, knowledge base, and the help desk part of the tool. So for this, we're going to install the enterprise edition as we're going to continue over the next couple of weeks, configure each part within the enterprise edition of the product. As you can see, there's a destination folder. If you have a service set up with additional so space on a different hard drive, you can just browse it and you can define it wherever you need to install it. Once you say next, you just continue to the next stages. You can define here what port you want to run the specific product on. So for my case, I'm going to make it 6060 just for having a different port. So automatically the product gets installed with PGSQL. So that's the Postgres SQL, which is installed within the specific um, product installation folder itself. Uh, we will be going through the session. We will show you how to change the database from your side as well. So next, continue this. This is just for technical support and from managing engine side or from our side to make sure that we give you as much as possible information while you're busy trialing on the demo and make sure that you all your questions and everything can get asked. So as you can see, it's was installing at the moment. So within the installation, after the installation has been done, we will get a window to define if you want to open up the readme file or if you want to start the services of the product. You will be seeing that screen within the next couple of minutes or seconds. In the meantime, I'm just going to go and open up my services so long. Okay, so as you can see, it's configuring and installation should now take place. So this is a screen that I talked about a bit earlier where you can go and view the readme file or start the services bus server. 
it's always advised not to start it directly for after the installation. Um, it's just my peripheral choice. Um, I'm not going to start it directly from the from the installation itself. I'll be running it through the command prompt. After you're done with the installation, it's always um, important to open up the directory for the specific installation that you just did. So, for instance, I will go to the directory, which is Manage Engine, Services Plus, bin. So within the bin, you can do a run.bat, and we'll populate the information for you exactly like it was going to start the services with the installation. It will do the startup and building the tables from your command prompt itself. Another way that you, to find that specifically to see if there's any issues and so on, you can go within the directory of the installation into the manage engine, service disk, bin folder. Oh, sorry, my mistake. If I'm not mistaken, that will be underneath the server. And you can just search for wrapper. So once you see the wrapper file, if you open that up, you'll see that it has it will start piling up exactly what happened um, with the, the database building. So it have, if it has been connected or not, um, if all the tables were created, started, and that will define that specifically for you then. You will see now once this uh, the, the command prompt has built all the tables and everything, once we go to the wrapper notepad, we will see all the information from there. Just hoping that everything goes well. It always takes some time with the first um, initial building of the database and so on. So as it says there, this may take a minute. So always just be patient with us specifically. Um, can't rush get things right. <laughs> Another way that you can actually start the services, you don't always have to do it through the run of bat. You can always go to the services itself, type in manage engine, and you'll see that it will pop up here once this once it's been created the first time. As you can see, the server container just got created. So it will continue uh, creating the rest of it. So let's wait for it. The core thing that you always have to remember once be, be before the installation of a service desk or of service desk plus or any of the managed engine products is um, to actually go and have a look at the system requirements as well. The system requirements will define what's going to be the best offered um, server or valued server for you based on what your requirements will be. If you have a thousand machines, it's going to suggest that you need this amount um, of RAM and this amount of hard disk space. So it's going to all be defined over there for you, and it's available on the Manage Engine site. Um, if you'd like to document, um, you're more than welcome also to send a mail through to us, and we will actually send it through to you as soon as possible as well, so you can just get some information from there. You can also just comment in the chat as well if you require the document, 
and we will keep um, track of you and send it to you by the end of the session as well. As soon as the startup is done, we can continue with the rest of the steps, and I'm sure we'll be able to cover all of that as we go along. While we're busy with the startup of the of the day or the building of the databases, um, does anyone have has anyone ever experienced um, issues after they did an installation on the specific um, product uh, where it basically just loads or um, doesn't start up or something like that? You're more than welcome to post your um, issues or so on into the chat. Maybe I can answer them while we're waiting for the startup.
Okay, so I'll come back to the specific um, page within the next couple of minutes, wait for it to start up. I'm just gonna continue to the on-site demo for Services Plus, and then I'll show you guys a bit further from there on. Okay, so as you guys can see, I'll go to the demo at desktopcentral.com. I'll log in as an administrator. So we'll move over directly to the mail server, user importing, converting the requests to technicians, and the net notification rule configuration. So when we come to the mail server settings, you first go to the admin page. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> Wrong one. <laughs> so it's plus. There we go. That's a correct one. <laughs> Apologies for that, people. <laughs> So here we go as a technician now. So as mentioned before, you move through to the admin page. On the admin page itself, from there on, you will have all your customiz customization settings over there. So as you can see, you get your help desk customizer, organizational details, users, problems, change management, service catalog, project management, discovery, asset management, software, purchase, contract management, user survey, and general settings. So for the time being, we'll be jumping over to the organizational details to configure the mail service settings. Okay, so as on the demo itself, it doesn't display the, the, the mail service settings. So we'll just jump over to the users and configure on the mail service settings once we are on the rest. So you get the option from Active Directory to, from your Active Directory to import users. As you can see, it will allow you, see it's disabled as well. So we'll jump over to changing requests to technicians. Cool, so we'll take Andy as an example. Andy is a requester. You get two different ways to change um, the specific requester over to a technician. You've got an option up here to say change as technician, or you can edit it and allow him to have access and provide him with technician details. So once we click on the change as technician tab, it will look as follow. We'll fill in the details as required. Make this test. Oh, so there we go. So we'll have it as testing. There will be a contact email, uh, the contact information, which, which would be his email address, what department the specific user is in, what sites he's allocated to, and then assign the groups for the technician. So over here is gonna be defined what groups that specific technician will be part of. Let's make it part of printer and problems, uh, printer problems and hosting team. We will then also give him specific roles. If it's going to be a project admin, is he going to be a specific team leader, manager, or just a team member? If he's going to have to approve specific requests and as well as purchase requests. So after that's been defined, at the bottom you'll have the option to enable logging for this technician. You will fill in his login name as well as his password. So once a user has, has been pulled through from the active directory, his username and password will automatically be pulled through if you allow the uh, Active Directory authentication, AD authentication. So once that's been allowed, the login name, the password will be there. Let's make this one, and we'll make the password. So as you can see, you can enable adver uh, administrator privileges, uh, or you can actually define a role for him where you will create your own custom role based on what they need to see at the top. 
at the top, what he's allowed to see and what he can do will be defined within your roles itself. So if it's going to be enabling just CMDB, that will be his role itself. So once that's done, you will save that specific user. Let's quickly back, check back. Perfect. So the installation has been completed. So we will continue back on the installation itself. So first testing comes that we will then test a specific startup. So all the tables have been built because we can see the login screen from Manage Engine. Once we log in, Perfect. So once we log into the specific page, we will have the functionality to see exactly what we can configure from there on. So once we jump over to the admin page, there will be the mail server settings, which we just started touching. So if we jump over to the mail server settings, this is where the information will be filled in. So first thing is that it will ask for the server name. So server name is very important um, for that specifically. So I'm going to quickly insert a the server name, username, and password for the for this. So let's say, for instance, if you have a Google account or if it's a Gmail address, you will have, for instance, your pop.gmail.com. Just an example. Um, your email address would be, let's say, for instance, rechart at gmail.com. And your password would be your email address password. You can go and view the password if you're not sure if you typed everything correct. And you'll insert that into the email address itself. You can, however, s separate alias email addresses by commas or by blank space to have extra accounts getting information, but it's only for the above configured mailbox. You will specify the specific email type, if it's IMAP, if it's POP, if it's POP secured, or if it's IMAP secured. Relevantly, if you select a different type, you will see that it will automatically populate the port details for you as well. Once done, you can save it. And after it's been saved, it will give you the functionality to say if you want to. It will tell you at the top if the server has been started or if it started fetching mail or if there's something that it needs to start getting from. Okay. So I'll jump over to the page. As you can see, there's the first mail error that we received. It's a connection to the mail server. So we know that the mail server is not right, and that is the reason why we're getting that error. Same goes for the outgoing server. Once on the outgoing server itself, you will put in the server name, your sender name, what the reply to address will be, which will be coming through to your help desk as users will be replying to specific mails and so on. It will come through to the help desk and it will correlate with the reply to email address. Will also be defined based on if your SMTP or SMTPS, um, if TLS is enabled, and what the port is if you have a relevant port for it. Once it's been saved, your upcoming mail server should be working perfectly. Okay, so we'll be jumping over to the the next part where we will be going back to the configuration of the product on changing the, the databases and configuring that specifically. Okay, so pretty simple. We will stop the, the, the services. Open up a notepad. I'm going to grab my information. Perfect. So 
So all my information is over there. Okay, so just, just a quick example. I will be using this now for changing the database. So pretty simple. You type in change db um, server.bat. Once you press enter, it will ask you where you want to change your database to. So for instance, if we want to change to, to a SQL server, it will ask us for what the host name is. So then this. Populate those main details. It will automatically pick up what we'll call the database. So I'm going to call the da database webinar STP. Our username will be ME and password would be ME007. Perfect. So you can do a test. Connection has been established. So that's brilliant news for us. So we're moving over from PGHQL over to MSSQL. So those are the steps on moving over your database to your MSSQL. Save that. Perfect. So after that's been saved, it should be done. We will do a run.bat again. Just making sure that we don't have any issues or clashing um, issues at the moment. So if you have any questions in regards to the mail server settings that we just configured, um, importing users from Active Directory, which we will cover quickly, um, or converting requests to technicians, you're more than welcome to just post them in the chat, and we can quickly have a look at it once we have the server up and running again. So, as I mentioned earlier, um, I was actually going to do the actually wanted to run it through the services, but it should already be starting up over there as well. As you can see, here is the other area where you can actually go right click and start, or you can just click on start there, and it will start up your information for you. Back again to the wrapper that I mentioned earlier as well, that didn't have relevant information. Let's quickly get to that again. Sorry about that. Seems like it hasn't published through today yet.
So I'm um, just going to give you guys a quick update while we're waiting for everything to start up. Um, so we've got another webinar actually coming up as well that will basically be the next information. So the reason why it's taking slow again is because we moved over to the MSSQL um, server. So it just needs to recreate the tables and everything again. So that's why it's a bit slow on creating all the containers. But our webinar too would be the basic setup um, on categories, templates, service catalog. So that will be the core functionality with it, where we will cover categories, your subcategories, items, um, creating templates, testing your request templates, creating service catalogs, adding service catalog services, to having service catalog SLAs created, and then adding, um, yeah, that's specifically uh, the core um, yeah, functionality of that specific webinar, which will take place on, if I'm not mistaken, two weeks from now. So that will be the 8th of October. So that will be our next webinar. Hopefully, we, we shouldn't experience uh, some of the slowness after we moved over and everything again, as we won't be repeating that specific part again. I will jump back to the web demo and come back a bit later. Uh, then I can actually continue on the notification rule configurations for you. So within your organizational details, you will have the opportunity to see notification rules. So notification rules are pretty important, extremely important actually, when it comes to acknowledging your users or acknowledging your technicians when a request has been associated to them or when a request has been created to provide your requesters with a request number. So as you can see, you will have a lot of different notifications coming through. So you can send your users their self-service login details, which will give them the opportunity to log into the self-service portal to actually go and log a request. You can go and customize that specific template as well so once you click on the customization of the template, we'll see that you can actually go to a specific title and you can you, you have variables that you can also add within the request itself. So you'll see that when it's end date you want to add or if it's a description that you want to add, you will have all that functionality to change it. You can remove this as well. Make the request your favorite Sorry. <laughs> it's IT team. <laughs> and then with a signature of your technicians. So that will be from your side that you can do itself. Also, as a user, what you can do is you can also go and personalize your account and fill in the information. You can change the password. You can put in an email signature from your side. If there's an API, uh, API key that you need to integrate this on, you can actually go and generate it from here. So this will give you the functionality to just customize a bit from your side. Jumping back to the server, perfect. Everything has been created again. So it seems like everything was perfect and everything should be sorted out by now. In regards to that, okay. So I'll use the administrator again. Okay. So if we move to the admin tab. Okay. <clears throat> we will move to the importing of users from the Active Directory. So as you can see here that you can go and have a local authentication password, which would be a random password if you want to, or a predefined password. You can also go and import requests from Active Directory. Once you click on the import requesters, you will fill in your relevant information, what the domain name is, what the domain controller would be, the login name, your password, 
what fields you want to import and you will import the specific users. It's very important always, not in the beginning to move associated assets. As you will do a network scan, then you can do a move associated assets as well to pick up the, uh, which users are associated to which assets as well. Okay. So as simple as that, that is basically the installation and configuration part of services plus the basic part of it. Um, there's not a, a lot of information for you, but um, yes, if you guys have any questions, uh, you're more than welcome to ask questions right now and I will quickly answer your questions as much as possible. There's no questions at the moment, so if you guys have any questions, you're more than welcome to send it through to support at itrtechnology.co.za and we will assist you guys as much as possible from our side to make sure that we ensure the best support from every, yeah, from our side. <laughs> cool. If you guys, yes, thank you very much for joining the webinar. Have a wonderful day.